Good afternoon guys, this is Dr. Cool Autofix. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to test your coolant temperature sensor. I've given a uh, thorough knowledge about this guy, what the ECM does with it. Now let's verify exactly what the ECM does with it. What is the kind of information or gossip that it tells the ECM. And uh, that is all about to find out today. So I have this sensor tool, I have one in my car, and I have this one. And this one is uh, defective. Now. By me looking at it, you won't know that it's defective, but the system I have it on, it was actually misbehaving before I removed it. It was actually acting crazy in my passat before I removed it. But before then, I haven't known how to test it. So now, let me share my knowledge, my experience with you so you can be able to use it to fix your car. And if you're coming here for the first time, you can support me by subscribing and turning your notification on. So, with that done, now what you need to, in order to test it, you're gonna be needing a very simple, basic or time meter or multimeter. Or voltmeter right so a cheap one it doesn't have to be expensive one this one is cheap i bought it on my amazon it's astro ai is very very good so i recommend you get this one if you are an electrician and it's going to give you a whole lot of information it can even take a temperature reading does it bake sandwich of course it bakes sandwich yes does it make waffles oh a lot of them gorgeous sweet delicious what about fries and chips yeah you can do that too so just go ahead and get it. I'm not, I'm not affiliating to demos, right? But this is just one of a great tool which I've gotten with me first testing here. After this video, I'm gonna test, I'll be testing injectors and let's see how they act, how to know about injectors. So let's turn this guy here, the meter. Also gonna be needing some alligator clips. I forgot to tell you guys, need alligator clip because the place where this thing are, are very, very inside, it's deep inside. And uh, alligator clip is going to help us to get in there. One second. Okay, and after that, we're also going to test uh, our speed shaft sensor. Now, if this guy is bad, you should sit on OL, right? But if it is not bad, it should start giving us a sensible resistance here, ohmic readings here. So let me go ahead and hook it up. There is no polar, there is no polarity here, so don't bother about the polar. So clip this guy here. I clip this guy here and uh, voila it's not giving any reading okay normally you can use your hair blower you know or you can put some eyes and dip this into it because there's a thermistor here that uh, increases the resistance as soon as heat is applied at a heat or the temperature is reduced or increased so let me my hand is warmer than the outside temperature so let me grab it a little bit more let's see if it needs gonna do anything but no damn thing okay now let's test another one which is currently inside my car that is working and see if we're gonna get the same reading let me clip this clip this that's gonna be a lot more harder because uh it's not quite in the very easy location but it's on an easy location though but not in an easy location i don't know if you understand that kind of english needless to say that i don't have to tell you to pop out your hood I'm going to los angeles maybe a movie star no so what are you going there to do let's check some chickens okay here i don't know if you can see it but this is the coolant temperature sensor here that's it right there underneath this uh brick booster hose so let me go ahead and uh see how i can position this for better okay now you can see so what i gotta do here is some of the tab has been broken so i'm gonna use my hand to uplift it and gently pull it from the connector don't pull it from the cable because it might get out i'm gonna test it in different ways the first test is we're gonna test the uh coolant temperature sensor there and that's actually what we're doing so it's still on resistance as it was previously i'm trying to capture these two guys together so you guys can participate will be so where is the alligator clip i'm not gonna find them okay so i want to go ahead and clip one into one and click the other into the other and if it's good you should start seeing some movement in this uh meter that is reading completely zero all right hasn't clipped. 
okay it has made a connection but it's it's not a good one now you know this one is working it has clicked in there so you can see the reading right now so this one is working now if i should start this engine right now let me start the engine let's experiment more Okay. Let's see if this temperature, this reading the is going to change. Resistance will start dropping because the chemistry are right That's interesting. The now the fan just kicked in. In the full duty cycle because now I removed the temperature so switch right there. there. That's another way to test if it is in good condition. And here, well, that is a sensible reading. So it was 1.4 before and, and it's decreasing. 1.4 kilo ohms and it's decreasing, you can see it right there. It's decreasing. So that shows that it's working. Now, number one is the fan click on in full duty cycle. The second is this reading. Then let's unplug okay, so guys, it and put it back and see if see, the fan so is gonna return. This is a it's gonna shut off. If the fan shut off, then it shows that it's good. Understanding how the long temperature seems to work. So, other things also you need to look at is that you're supposed to be having a check engine light if your ECU is doing as you're supposed to. But here, my own uh, uh, cluster is having problems, so it's not showing a check engine light, so I need to replace it. So, now guys, you have known how to test the coolant temperature sensor, including seeing what is actually working right there on the engine. Then if we have to test more before I go, let's check the power coming from the engine with the okay, multimeter. The two-wire right there. The ground and the different so you can do that. So can do that. So at this point, you don't need to turn the multimeter to turn it to the voltage. At this point, before to test the power, you need to change it from ohmic range yeah. and to voltage range. Now, that's it right there. So here, mm -hmm. we're not going to go ahead and use the, 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 the two probe button to start in the hole. The two things there. It's very good. There's no problem there. It's going to be a small bit. It's going to be a small bit. It's going to be zero. And I start the other one in the hole. And you're seeing 4.9, so the reference rate from the ECU is 4.9, but when it's the ignition on, it's 5 volts. So everything has been checked and worked in good condition. So let me go ahead and shut off the car. So guys, subscribe to this channel and give me a thumbs up. I gotta catch you guys later. Bye for now.